Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel Mining Engineering. I am Satya Brother. Today we will discuss on the topic explosives. In the previous classes, we have uh, covered blast region parameters, volume of rock or ton of rock blasted, explosive penetration per hole, and the powder vector. If you have not seen the previous lectures, please click on the link above to watch the previous lectures. Also, we have uh, seen the controllable parameters of the blasting is divided in three groups like the blast region parameters which includes the diameter, charge length, burden spacing etc. The second one is the physiochemical parameters of explosives which includes type of explosive, strength, energy, priming system and third one is the time which includes the delay timings and the initiation system. Among these the blast region parameters we have already seen in our previous lectures. In the upcoming lectures we will see the explosives and the initiation system during the blasting. Let's watch two videos. This video which you have saw right now occurred on 4th of August 2020. A large quantity of ammonium nitrate stored at the port city of Beirut, the capital of Lebanon, exploded. The explosion was preceded by a fire in the same warehouse, but as of 2021, April, the exact cause of the detonation is still under investigations. In this video, uh, in the warehouse, Ammonium nitrate explosives was stored and somehow fire catches and the massive fire leads to detonation of the explosives. Let's see the second video. And the second one. Here, uh, the blasting is done in the limestone mines. Here also, ammonium nitrate explosives was used for the blasting. So, what's the difference in these two videos? In the same, in the both the case, ammonium nitrate was the explosives, and due to the detonation, the explosion occurred. So, what's the difference in between these two videos? So, we can say that the first one was an accidental event it's unintentional event and the second one was an intentional event so we normally refer the term explosion to refer one accidental event like there was one gas explosion occurred on the highway we don't use that the blasting we normally use the term blasting to define an intentional event like we done blasting in the field to extract the rock mass so in both the case we have seen the explosive is the prime cause for the blasting or for the explosion so let's define what is explosive by dr kosik day explosive is a chemical substance Sometimes may be a mixture of fuel and oxidizer which releases huge quantity of shock and gas energy instantaneously and triggering by a detonation. Dr. Stephen Miller has defined a substance that when subjected to a stimuli that is a suitable stimuli undergoes a violent chemical decomposition with the evolution of heat and gas. Some others also define explosives like a material containing stored chemical energy which can be rapidly released in the form of heat and gas pressure when triggered to do so. All these definitions defines the same thing. Let us suppose this is the explosive substances which when initiated or stimulated by some detonation, the chemical reaction takes place inside the explosives and a huge quantities of energy liberated like this and that energy results in the shock wave 
and the gas pressure so this is the complete chemical process of the explosives the chemical energy converts to mechanical energy as per the act explosive act 1984 of india explosive is defined as per the act like this you can read it and you can visit the explosive act 1984 to know more details on this explosive rule 2008 one can refer to explosive rule for the procedure for handling and the use of the explosives we'll discuss the act and rule later in the next class here is one question for you in the left side you are visualizing one candle and the right side there is a one cartridge explosives so if a 100 gram of candle is compared with a 100 gram of cartridge explosives then which has more energy obviously one will say that the cartridge has the more energy as compared to the candle because we don't have to light one candle because uh, and uh, we we are afraid to handle the explosives we know explosives is more dangerous however that's not the truth if you compare a 100 gram of candle with a 100 gram of cartridge explosives a candle releases 8 times more heat energy 4 times more gas energy so we can say the candle has more energy as compared to the explosives as compared to the cartridge explosives however the candle is not dangerous as compared to the explosives why the reason is that the candle releases the energy in a very long period of time the reaction time is 50000 times more as compared to the explosives that's why at a particular point of time if we compare in a particular point of time the energy liberated from the candle is insignificant as compared to the explosives that's why the explosive the cartridge explosives more dangerous because the reaction time is very fast at a particular point of time instantaneously will get a huge quantities of energy in the case of candle at a instant at a particular point of time there is very limited amount of energy because the candle will release its energy in a very very long duration of time that's why we don't afraid to light one candle however we don't dare to touch one explosives now let's look into the history of explosives gunpowder gunpowder also known as the black powder it consists of mixture of sulfur carbon and potassium nitrate that is salt pepper the sulfur and charcoal act as fuels while the salt pepper is an oxidizer Gunpowder was invented in 9th century China as one of the four great inventions and spread throughout most part of Eurasia by the end of 13th century. Next one is the fulminating gold. Fulminating gold was first high explosives known to man and was first noted in western alchemy as early as 1585. Sebald Schwarzer was the first to isolate this compound and comment on its characteristics in his book Gyrosia Sojournia. Fulminating gold generally terms the explosive reaction products of gold three compounds such as halogenides, oxides, and hydroxides with ammonia. Next is the NG. NG is also known as nitroglycerin, trinitroglycerin (TNG), nitroglycerin trinitro (GTN), or one to three trinitro C propane. It is a dense, colorless, oily explosive liquid. It is a mix of nitric acid, sulfuric acid, and glycerols. You should remember the compounds in the explosive mixtures and the terms name like ng means nitroglycerin etc the terms are important otherwise uh, the history is only for your reference purpose it was discovered by ascano sobrio in 1846 next the tnt tnt means trinit trinitro toluene was first prepared in 1863 by german chemist Julius Wilbrandt 
This velo solid occasionally used as a reagent in chemical synthesis but it is best known as an explosive material with convenient handling properties. Now is dynamite. Dynamite was invented by Swedish chemist Sir Alfred Nobel in 1860s and was first safely manageable explosive stronger than black powder. Dynamite is an explosive made of nitroglycerin, sorbent such as powder, cells or clay and stabilizers. Next is ANFO. It is pronounced as N4. It is called ammonium nitrate fuel oil. It is a widely used bulk industrial explosive. Its name commonly pronounced as N4. It consists of 94% porous grilled ammonium nitrate NH4NO3 which acts as the oxidizing agent and absorbent for the fuel and 6% is fuel oil. Ammonium nitrate was synthesized in 1659 by J.R. Goldberg. Next is PETN. It's pentaerythrol tetranitrate, shortly called as PETN, also known as explosive material, was first synthesized in 1894 and was introduced as a commercial explosive after World War I. Next is slurry. Slurry or the water gel explosives were invented in 1940s. Ingredients are bearing polyvinyl alcohol, gura gum, dextran gums, urea, formaldehyde, and resins are the typical gelling agents plus aqueous and ammonium nitrate oxidizer and hydrocarbon oil. Next is emulsion. Emulsion explosive was invented in 1961 by Richard Eagley and Albert Necker. Patented in 1964, water in oil emulsion. Here are the references for your reading. In the next lecture, we will see the classification of explosives and the explosive accessories.